first installment in the Battlefield franchise launched on the 19th of November, with Battlefield 2042 promising to revolutionize the genre, claiming that it would be the next generation of first-person shooter games. That very plainly did not happen, and the game has not only fallen short of expectations, it hasn't even come close. It is hemorrhaging players at an alarming rate, and in this video, we're going to go over all of the key reasons why. But first, some background. If you have even the vaguest of interests in video games, then Battlefield will be a property you've no doubt heard of at some point. Whether or not you're a first-person shooter fan is irrelevant. It is such a major franchise in the world of gaming that it's pretty much impossible to avoid its existence. Started by the Swedish company DICE, who are now known as EA DICE since their buyout in 2006, Battlefield 1942 hit shelves in 2002 and was an instant hit spawning sequel after sequel and eventually leading to an entire franchise. Very much seen as the alternative to Call of Duty, which has dominated the first-person shooter genre for countless years, Battlefield tends to feature a focus on cinematic battles across mammoth maps far larger than its counterpart. Teamwork and coordination with objective-based game modes play a huge role in helping the series stand out. Whilst retaining broadly excellent gunplay and beautifully designed maps, that players can destroy over the course of a multiplayer game. These are hugely profitable games that generate astronomical amounts of money, with Battlefield 1, for example, selling over 15 million copies and winning a Game Critics Award for Best Action Game. The franchise is so ingrained into our pop culture, in fact, that it has even flirted with crossing over from the world of gaming to the world of TV and film. On two separate occasions in 2012 and 2016, various companies have discussed potentially adapting the series, using stories from the many Battlefield games single-player campaigns as a foundation for either TV or film projects. Granted, nothing has happened since then, but the fact that this idea has been considered on multiple occasions only reinforces just how titanic of a property Battlefield is. And with that in mind then, it is a great shame how much literally everyone despises Battlefield 2042. It has been panned by critics and rejected by fans, leaving it as perhaps the worst game of the 20 plus year history of the franchise. Let's break down why. First up, lack of campaign. As we touched on briefly when discussing the legacy of the Battlefield franchise, the modern entries of the series are primarily focused on their huge multiplayer communities that see hundreds of players do battle in online games, fighting for supremacy to improve their ranking and unlock new options for their classes such as weapon upgrades or equipment. While it's true that this is a huge part of Battlefield's appeal, the games have also always included a single-player campaign, right from the first game in 2002 when multiplayer honestly wasn't much of an option all the way through Battlefield 5 in 2018. Whilst these campaigns have taken something of a backseat with the explosion in popularity and possibilities of online gameplay, they've remained important parts of the Battlefield experience, offering intriguing stories and allowing new players to try something a little less intense as they learn how to play the game properly. Battlefield 2042, according to DICE, did not need one of these campaigns apparently. They almost completely cut the single player experience from the game, leaving all of the game's appeal on a multiplayer system that really wasn't improved enough to justify losing an entire game mode. And they still charged the full price of $60, despite the fact that presumably Presumably less work had gone into the project thanks to the lack of a narrative campaign to accompany the fun yet mindless chaos of the multiplayer. The fact that most competitor games released recently, such as Call of Duty Vanguard, featured narrative single-player experiences only adds insult to injury. The developers defended the decision after the initial backlash, claiming that they were going to focus all of their efforts on adding depth to the multiplayer, but it's clear by now that that wasn't enough. Next, oh my god, the bugs. Bugs are part and parcel of any video game, especially with how complex modern titles are now in terms of their code. It's pretty much impossible to create something that works absolutely perfectly from the first day of launch. Bug testing is a legitimate job within the industry, and it still isn't enough to stamp out every error before a game's release. To an extent, this is something that is just accepted by gamers. An side of the industry.
industry in this modern age is that patches and bug fixes can be downloaded straight onto a person's console, remedying issues without the player having to go through the effort of buying an expansion, for example. That being said, fans' goodwill can quickly run out if it becomes clear that a game isn't just suffering from a few issues that slip through the cracks, and instead is a totally broken mess that has just conned its player into buying it without actually working properly? That second description is Battlefield 2042, in case you didn't get that. In fairness, it's hard to know who to blame for this. DICE have made plenty of Battlefield games in the past, so it's unlikely that they just forgot how to do it properly. Most tend to agree that it comes down to DICE's parent company, EA, who desperately wanted the game to be released for the holiday season, regardless of what state it was in. Regardless of who is to blame, the ultimate loser is, of course, the players, who have responded to the, frankly, disgraceful state of the game by completely giving it up, leading to the massive 70% drop in Steam players that has been so well documented. There was and still is a monumental collection of technical issues with the game, crashes are incredibly common, and other glitches threaten to make the game borderline unplayable at times. The game should never have been released in this state, and as much as EA were desperate to get it out in time for the Christmas rush, it seems as if the decision will cost them far more than they have gained. Then there's the maps. Any good first-person shooter needs good maps, especially if they're focused on multiplayer, and especially, especially, if multiplayer is literally the only game mode you've bothered to include in your game. Players are going to spend, hopefully, hundreds of hours fighting around the selection of maps, becoming intimately familiar with them, and eventually learning to navigate them like the back of their hand. The previous iterations of Battlefield seem to understand this well enough, with gorgeous, well-crafted maps becoming something of a staple of the series, something it was actively praised for. Unfortunately, 2042 absolutely fails to live up to the excellence of its predecessors, with its maps being labeled some of the worst in the entire history of the series. Much of the criticism comes from the fact that the maps are simply too large and too spread out which is saying something considering how huge the arenas in past games have been. This more is more attitude to design has led to a situation where many players spend an egregious amount of time simply running around and trying to find someone to shoot at. Another critique is that many of these maps seem to lack a sufficient amount of cover, which uh, seems kind of important in a shooter game. Many players end up frustrated as they're left exposed and in the open quickly and easily being picked picked off by enemy snipers without any real opportunity to protect themselves. It's an incredibly sad state of affairs for a franchise that once boasted some of the best maps in the business. And finally, so many design choices. As you can imagine from a series that has something like 15 plus entries, DICE are well aware of the fact that they can't just release a game without doing something to change it up a bit. Yeah, I know, they cut single player and made all of their maps more of a pointless kill zone than maps in their game actually set in World War One, but I mean good changes. You know, stuff that freshens the game up and adds that air of innovation. Something that will encourage long-term players to adapt and potentially prove to be the one feature that finally attracts someone who, until now, has refused to play the series. The Frostbite engine that first released with Battlefield Bad Company in 2008 is an example of the series actually accomplishing that, introducing destructible maps that would be blown to bits and actually suffer physical damage throughout the battles, adding to the war-torn atmosphere and further immersing players into the game. Did 2042 manage anything like that at all? No. Did it at least keep all the good, solid design from previous titles? Somehow also? No. Almost every single design innovation made by DICE seemed to take the franchise backwards with bizarre emissions, further intensifying the problem. For example, somehow the game launched without in-game chat. In 2021, DICE could not handle in-game voice communication in 2021. It's honestly difficult to believe that such a blunder is possible, given how very important communication between players is to a franchise like Battlefield, but DICE simply could not find a way to implement it. 
This is one of just many horrific design choices. The new scoreboards that offer pretty much no information have been lambasted. The recoil balance is totally out of control, there's no class system, weapon balancing is a mess, and you can't even switch teams during lobby play. And that's everything. Thanks for watching.